Welcome, everyone. So, uh, as I said, my name is Mark Flanagan, and this is an introduction to Blazor WebAssembly. Uh, so, time for a slight confession, although I don't keep a huge secret of it, but I don't much like JavaScript. Maybe a little controversial, but maybe as you're here, uh, you might agree with me. Um, I much prefer C Sharp and .NET as a language over JavaScript. I find it a lot more pleasant to program in. Um, because of this, I much prefer writing back-end code to front-end code. Uh, until I heard about Blazor and the option to run it with WebAssembly, which really excited me due to the possibilities it presents for running c -sharp code WebAssembly in the browser. Um, I did make the mistake, however, of getting rather excited in the Slack channel about this. And next thing I know, uh, I'm up here doing a talk about it, and there are quite a number of you. <laughs> Um, I was originally promised this would be in a much smaller room, and then I got moved, so such it is. Uh, so I've been developing a, a personal project in Blazor, uh, which is a character builder for a role-playing game that I play, because I'm a nerd. Um, I've been having a great time playing around with the new technology, uh, making something actually useful with it. Uh, so I thought I'd get up here and share it with all of you. And so we come to... What is Blazor? Um, so what is it? Well, it, it's an open source framework for creating single page applications using C Sharp and Razor. Uh, who here has used Razor before? Uh, MVC, Razor Pages, something similar? So quite a few of you, you are probably fairly familiar with the syntax of Razor. Uh, and mm, shouldn't be too much of a surprise to you how this is going to look. Uh, if you've used something like uh, React, Angular, Vue, something similar, uh, Blazor fills a very similar role to that, uh, allowing you to do uh, client-side UI development in c -sharp .net. Um, There is a server-side execution mode to go with the client-side one, um, but I'm not really here to talk about that today. It's much less interesting, if you ask me. Uh, the WebAssembly one is where it's at. Um, so. As you can see from the diagram there, um, it's running in the browser on top of a .NET runtime uh, on top of WebAssembly. So it actually downloads your application, the DLLs and everything, into the browser, similar to how you download uh, your React libraries, for example, and then execute your application on top of those. Um, it is all currently rather experimental. Uh, there is a planned stable release for May 2020, so hopefully we'll hear a little more about that soon. Um, but let's uh, get into it a little more. I'm not going to go into too many details of the code and how to do a lot of things, uh, because I don't know if he's here somewhere, but Chris Sainty is doing another talk after this one uh, with a lot more detail as to how to actually go about making applications in Blazor. So if you're interested, stick around. should be good. So, it should look a little something like this. Um, so, this is a simple component uh, that's built in Blazor, which increments a number every time you click a button on the site. So, hands up who's played Cookie Clicker? Anyone? So, people understand this is uh, vital functionality. Um, very important. But we've got some fairly basic HTML here. Uh, as you can see, people who've used Razor before should be fairly familiar with the syntax of the HTML. Um, we've got a, a header, uh, a p tag with the current count being rendered into it using standard Razor. Uh, we also have a button. And on the button, we've got the on click event. Now, that's subtly different from JavaScript. As you can see, it has the at symbol at the start of it. Um, and that will execute the increment count method that you can see uh, that is written in C sharp there. So that, of course, increments the current count property that's on the code there. Uh, and that will cause the HTML to update, um, change the DOM, and make the number go up. All fairly simple there. Obviously. Uh, more complex component will do quite a bit more than that. Um, but this is a fairly simple example for you. Um, a few things that I quite like about this. Um, the on-click there, I don't know if you can see, but it is 
uh, highlighted. That's actually a reference to the method. It's not a magic string or anything like that. So you're going to get your IntelliSense completion. You get compilation errors if it doesn't match. Um, if you're refactoring, etc., we caught up in any renames and things that you do. Uh, so you're not putting magic strings of method names and stuff like that all over the place, uh, which I find makes life easier when you're doing large refactors. Um, one thing that uh, I do quite like for larger components, or if they're a little more complex, is you can split the code section there out into a separate file. Uh, so you can have all of your HTML razor in one file and your C sharp and the code that actually powers everything in another file just underneath it. Uh, I quite like doing that. feels a little cleaner to me. Maybe people will uh, disagree with me there. Um, but when you then uh, spin this up and use it, it will look a little like this. Uh, so in order to use the component, we can reference it as a tag, and we can see what's actually produced by that here as well. So as you can see, we've got a, a page directive at the top there. That actually says that this component is intended to be referenced as a page. You'll access it via the URL. Obviously, that's a fairly simple URL. It's the root of the site there. Um, and we've referenced the components, the counter that we made before, and we've passed in a, a parameter there for the current count. So we've said that actually we want to start at 10. That's a, a good number for us to start at. Um, so if anyone's used uh, MVC, the uh, counter there is more like a partial view or a child action than a full page, uh, whereas with the page directive, you can actually navigate to it and view it as a page. Um, and as you can see, we have successfully rendered our Hello World with the counter on there, and you can click the button and the number goes up. I did consider making a small GIF of this to show you, but I ran out of time, I'm afraid. Um, so. Now we have our counter component that we've built. Uh, we can use it wherever we need it, as many times as we want, multiple times inside the same page, inside a loop. Uh, and they're all self-contained. So you could put five or six counters on a page if you wanted. And they won't interfere with each other unless you start passing parameters around, which I believe Chris might talk about. So some of the uh, interesting features of Blazor at that. There we go. Um, one of the reasons that I'm excited about it and I feel makes it much better than some of the previous attempts to allow you to run .NET code in the browser, things like Silverlight, etc., um, is that because of WebAssembly, it's supported across all major browsers without any plugins or anything like that. It will just work. Uh, so you'll be able to navigate to the website and download the files and it just starts executing. None of this, oh, you need to install our plugin to be able to view this. It just starts working for you, which makes life easier for your users. And if the browsers or the plugin manufacturer stops making the plugin, you're not stuffed. So it has, as we've talked about, a, a component based framework. If Anyone has used React, Angular, Vue, et cetera, uh, you'll be fairly familiar with the way that works, but it's a fairly standard way of building a, a web UI these days. And uh, it has a number of the other uh, features that you'd expect from a modern single page app framework, uh, things like dependency injection as standard, um, and things like layouts and routing so that you can actually navigate around the site and load the components that you're expecting. Um, the other thing to uh, touch on, obviously we're not running much in the way of JavaScript to get this up and running, but there's quite a lot of third-party libraries out there that do use JavaScript, uh, things like Google Analytics, for example. If you wanted to interact with those, you would be able to do so with the JavaScript interop that's available with Blazor. Um, excuse me one second.
So you'd be able to call into JavaScript from your C Sharp code uh, and interact with third party libraries or anything else that you wanted to do that way. It's also possible to go the other way. You can have JavaScript call into your uh, C Sharp code. Uh, so you can get a two-way communication going there with any third-party JavaScript libraries or anything that you've written yourself, um, which opens up quite a lot of possibilities in terms of what you can actually achieve uh, with Blazor. Um, and the last thing, and one that I'm quite excited about, I don't know if anyone's ever tried to unit test your views in MVC, uh, but it's difficult, shall we say. Um, Blazor, on the other hand, is shaping up to be quite testable. There's a number of different test harnesses out there. Um, and I've played around with a couple of them. They seem quite powerful. So you can load in your components into them. You can execute methods, set properties, and exercise the code in your components, and then assert things about the state of the HTML that's actually rendered from those. Uh, which is incredibly powerful if you want to actually test your application and ensure that everything's working as it should. Um, of course, because it's running in the browser, you can use something like Selenium to do an integration test on there and test absolutely everything working all together, which is incredibly powerful. Um, so now that we've found out a little bit about what it is, why would you actually want to use Blazor? So full stack .NET development, it allows you to use C Sharp both in the client and the server. So no switching languages when you switch from server side to client side development. Uh, no more JavaScript, that's a big one for me. He knows what's up. Um, the ability to only have one language for both your back end and your front end reduces the skill set that your developers need to actually be effective in working on a Blazor solution. So when you're uh, either looking to hire or you're looking to learn how to build something here, you don't have to learn JavaScript as well as .NET. Uh, you can do everything in .NET. Um, you also have uh, shared code between the client and server because of this. So when you're writing your uh, models, for example, in the API on the server, you put validation attributes on those, for example, so you can say, oh, this is required, this has to be uh, a certain way. Those models you can put into a shared library. Uh, because of the .NET standard specification that both of them use, you can then have your form on your client-side application be based off of that same model, and you can have the validation match between the two of them. So when you say that this is a required field, for example, and you put a nice error message on it on your server, your client brings that through, and magic happens. It's very convenient. Um, I believe Chris is going to go into a fair bit more detail on validation. Uh, so if you're interested about that, then stick around afterwards. Um, but yeah, this, this saves you quite a bit of time as well. Uh, I don't know if anyone's done uh, JavaScript single page app development, uh, but the little I've done, uh, a lot of re-implementing of your validation, both on the server and the client. So that will save you quite a bit of time. Um, there are a few downsides to Blazor as well. And uh, Chris is probably uh, glaring at me right now. He is, yeah, I can see him. Um, currently, is a preview. Uh, it's not ready for production use. Uh, Chris might disagree with me. Uh, and he's a braver man than I. Um, but you might find it quite difficult to uh, get approval to use something that's quite so cutting edge. Uh, but as I said, May is not that far away, so hopefully we will hear some more news soon about a stable release. Um, and whilst I've had a few issues with some various bits myself, uh, it's, it's not anything I haven't been able to resolve. Uh, people are asking questions on Stack Overflow about it. You can find help uh, if you need it. I've not come across a problem yet that I haven't been able to solve. Um, I have also had to refactor huge swathes of my application a few times uh, because new versions come out, they've changed the way things were done, and there I am with a thousand build errors. 
But I got through them, and the new way is better, so it's worth it. But hopefully when they release in May, everything will be stable, and there won't be quite so many sweeping changes. Um, one thing that uh, people do talk about that's an issue is the size of the application files that are downloaded. Now, this is a bit of a controversial uh, point. People agree, disagree with it. Um, my application is around four megs with compression turned on, which is on the larger end, but it's not huge. There are sites that are quite a lot bigger than that, and they still manage just fine. There's also quite a lot of work to be done on this front as well. Obviously, as it's a preview, they've been working on getting everything functional rather than optimizing it and making the files as small as possible. So there's still a fair amount of stuff that can be done to uh, shrink that down and make the sites load quite a bit faster. Um, so Internet Explorer, no one likes it and it should go away, but unfortunately it is still here. Um, can I use, uh, says roughly 90% of browsers supports WebAssembly. Obviously that's going to vary uh, for your audience quite a bit. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, the company I work for, we've got a lot of uh, technophobic users apparently. There's about 10% uh, of people still using Internet Explorer 11, and some poor souls still stuck on IE7. Uh, so that might cause some uh, problems if your audience is similar. Um, there are apparently a few things in the pipeline uh, to help with compatibility, uh, but almost certainly nothing is going to improve the situation for Internet Explorer uh, beyond switching to a different mode um, or using a different technology or convincing your users not to use Internet Explorer. I'm in favor of that one personally, but uh, it's not my choice. Um, I've also had a few issues with debugging, um, not being quite as smooth as you might have come to expect from something like MVC. Um, but it's certainly good enough to be able to get all of the work done. Um, you can certainly hit breakpoints and inspect properties and things like that and see what's actually, actually going on. Um, and there's still quite a bit of work to happen on the tooling. The preview versions of Visual Studio tend to be a little better for this because they're under a lot more active development. But I feel like most of the downsides uh, seem to be due to the fact that it's still in preview, it's still under heavy development, and they're still working out all of the kinks with it. So, yeah, we, we shall see how this shapes up. Um, I, for one, am very excited about the possibility for Blazor WebAssembly. Uh, I would love to be doing a lot more work in it. As it is, I'm sticking with my uh, personal project and very much enjoying things. So, unfortunately, that was a little bit quick, but uh, does anyone have any questions about Blazor? Yeah, so the um, dependency injection works via uh, property injection, and there's uh, an attribute that you put next to something to say that you want one of those injected. And you could then obviously just set that to a mock. So when you're unit testing them, if you wanted to uh, mock out your API client, for example, you'd be able to provide a, a fake one there that returns whatever data you want, and then assert about the uh, contents of the component thereafter. Sorry? What's my real problem with JavaScript? The braces are all in funny places, <laughs> uh, amongst other issues. I have a lot of beef with JavaScript. Um, why, why would you choose this over JavaScript? The, um, I guess ultimately it comes down to personal preference. If you like JavaScript as a language, then you're perfectly capable of writing server-side JavaScript code and doing your entire stack in JavaScript. Um, but the ability to use other languages in the browser 
uh, opens up a lot more possibilities for development than just the browser has to be in JavaScript, and then you make the choice of either doing your back-end work in JavaScript or having that language disconnect between back-end and the front-end, where you've got two different languages involved, different skill sets, etc. Say again, sorry? Yeah. Um, I've been very much enjoying having the same language on both. Um, the matter of the, the right tool for the right job, part of the, the point of WebAssembly and Blazor is that there are going to be a lot more tools available for doing the job in front end other than just JavaScript. So what it is really is giving a lot of people choice as to which tool they want to use on the front end rather than, well, which flavor of JavaScript would you like to use? You've got so many more options. I believe there's... Uh, a couple of different C-sharp options. Uh, I believe there's a talk tomorrow about running Rust in WebAssembly, uh, and I believe there's a few other languages that are working on similar WebAssembly-based frameworks as well. Uh, I believe you had a question? Um, so in terms of uh, state management, there's, uh, as I said, the option to pass properties up and down. Um, there's also uh, cascading properties that you can set at a very high level and then inject them uh, further down, reference them there. So you don't have to pass them all the way from the very top to the very bottom. So things like your login state and stuff like that, you can reference them where you need to without having to pass them all the way down into the tiniest little component down the bottom that just needs to know if someone's logged in or not. Uh, so there are um, like methods of managing the state, etc. I'm sure Chris will go into some more information on that. Um, but yes, there's quite a few tools available for managing state, passing your data around, etc. Um, there's a, a rather limited amount of debugging um, in like the specific browser tools that you might be used to. Um, most of it is if you get an unhandled exception, then it console logs the exception for you. Um, but I've you know, sound a little bit egotistical. I've not had an awful lot of debugging that I needed to do uh, because the application I'm writing is still fairly simple. Um, so it builds to a DLL, and then when you load the site, it loads in a, a WebAssembly uh, mono runtime for .NET, which then brings in the DLLs and executes them on that .NET runtime. Um, so you're running .NET with your application then in the DLLs on top of that. Are they looking to try and move that mono to nice and else? Um, I don't know, actually. It, it seems to be working fine for me at the moment, but I honestly don't know. Uh, Chris might have an idea on that one if you want to have a chat with him. Um, are they planning on removing mono? There we go. Uh, someone over there had a question? So in, in terms of deployments, uh, there's two different options. You can have it either be a static site, so if you don't need any uh, input from the server for hosting your actual WebAssembly uh, client project, then you can just host it on any static web host, and it downloads the files, executes them on the client. Uh, so you can put that almost anywhere you could host a website. Um, in terms of building uh, an actual ASP.NET hosted version of it, 
Um, the build pipeline is fairly similar to uh, publishing MVC, for example. You can um, just right-click and publish in Visual Studio. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I'm actually running mine in a pair of Docker containers, one for the API and one for the uh, client project, uh, and that's working all right for me. Um, so very similar to publishing many other ASP.NET projects. Anyone else? Um, so there's not actually a way of directly accessing the DOM from C Sharp. Uh, the general idea is that you build your components and that your components themselves would manipulate the DOM. So rather than going, okay, I'm going to find this element and I'm going to set this property on it, I'm going to change the inner text or something like that, um, you change the properties on your components and allow those to propagate the changes out to the DOM. Uh, so you can achieve what you want to achieve in terms of getting the DOM to look how you want it to look, but you wouldn't generally manipulate it directly with code like that, like you can in JavaScript. Uh, it's much more about setting the state correctly and allowing the components to render that state into the site that you'd expect. Um, in terms of performance, I've not had any problems, and I have deliberately put a lot of data into my system to see how that does actually perform. Um, in terms of WebAssembly itself, uh, there's been a number of different people who've tested performance of WebAssembly, and for the most part, it seems to be shaping up to be faster than JavaScript for actual WebAssembly. Of course, then when you introduce the uh, mono runtime on top of it, you do introduce some overheads, but I've not had any issues with performance of running things in the, in the client. Most of the loading time for my site is when it reaches out to the API to grab data, which is going to be part of the, mostly the longest part of loading any pages, reaching out to the server to fetch what you need to actually render it. Um, going a little bit on my understanding here, I think, but I, as I understand it, there's not a virtual DOM. Um, I don't think if you want some more information about the inner workings of it, then perhaps you should uh, have a chat with Chris. But as I understand it, there's not a virtual DOM, uh, but I think there is some mechanism of updating only the bits that you want to update rather than redrawing the entire thing. Anyone else? No, I think that might be everything then. I think I've uh, gone a little bit short, so enjoy your slightly longer coffee break. Um, and if you have any more questions, come and have a chat with me, um, possibly Chris. And as I said, if you're interested in learning more about how to actually go about developing uh, application with Blazor and WebAssembly, stick around. Uh, I certainly will be. I'm hoping to learn something from Chris, so it should be good. Thank you very much.